In this bucket here, I've mixed up uh, our glazing mix and I've let it sit overnight and then I came in this morning and we got it all so that it looks it looks really nice. I'll put a little bit right here, just kind of let you see that. So that that consistency is about pretty much what we want. Now you can see all of this has been soldered, wiped down, and uh, and now we're going to glaze this window. So it takes a little bit of time because what you want to make sure of is that you have all or any and all little solder balls off of the window before you start putting because you don't want to you don't want to push one of those solder balls in between the glass and the lead because i can almost guarantee you eventually it's going to break whether you whether when you're putting it on one side or when you flip it over and putty it on the other side so uh, both sides of this needs to be done and what we're doing is we're actually cementing well we're doing two things we're cementing the glass to the lead caming and we're also waterproofing it. Now this glazing compound that we use, we, we only use the lacquer thinner to break it down enough and you'll see as I putty this, you'll see that lacquer thinner evaporating right out of the glazing and eventually we're, it'll almost clean itself and then we'll polish it. So I have this really, <laughs> you know what, it's, it's nothing, it's not a fancy brush, okay? But what it does is it's kind of ergonomically helpful to me because I can get my hand up and away and I can do a specific area. So when we're glazing these windows, we want to make sure that we work in a circular motion. Now I'm doing this with nothing on it so you can kind of see it. But we're going in and we're going to grab a little bit of glazing putty. And now, and you see the consistency of this? Oh. Good job. Even though this isn't going to be exposed to the weather, once this glass is cemented to the lead, it's going to make it really, really rigid. And you can see, you just push the glazing in. If we wait just a second, we can see that the, the lacquer thinner is evaporating a little bit. And look, see that? It's, it's already starting to evaporate. So what we're going to do, we're going to try and, and clean it up as much as we can as we're glazing. So we're going to apply the glazing material and then now that it's starting to dry, we want to make sure that it's pushed in all of those cracks. The other thing that glazing does is when you putty it on one side, don't wait two or three days to do the other side. Do the other side right away as soon as you get this side cleaned up. Because what the other thing, the glazing, you want it to do is you want it to center, center the glass within the heart of the lid, okay? So make sure you get all that, and this brush is really nice. And you know, if it dries out, all you have to do is soak it in a little bit of lacquer thinner for maybe 15, 20 minutes. And that old glazing on there that dried out after you cleaned the brush will loosen right up. And you don't have to, you know, you don't have to throw the brush away every time you use it. You can see that I'm, I'm going in a circular motion and then on areas that are really pretty much straight, like especially along the edge. These solder joints are so close together, I can't pull that edge out. But sometimes, y'all, when you're putty in your window, you want to make sure you get glazing in the outside edge as well. So you may have to hold it and pull, hold and pull, and do it like that. You know, when I first started doing stained glass, we used to do all of this by hand, okay? And the most important thing, everybody, is that when you get this done, you got all the numbers off. <laughs> so there's, uh, and that's why you know, since we're when we're since we're puttying this, I'm going back and kind of cleaning everything up, pushing it out of the way, getting off any extras, and then I have a, a, a few really simple tools, y'all, and you're gonna love them. You can, and they're all very inexpensive and you probably have it laying around the house. So, now that we have all of our glazing 
fitted in the lead. I'm going to put my brush back in my jar with a little bit of lacquer thinner and just kind of rinse it a little bit. Kind of like a, you know, like a paintbrush. All right, so we're going to let that sit right there. So the two tools that I enjoy using for doing my glazing cleanup, and this is just removing excess, okay? So I have a bamboo skewer, okay? And then I also have a, a quarter inch diameter dowel that I put in the pencil sharpener, but I didn't sharpen it. Okay? And as you can see, I have a glazing eraser. So as I pull this up and pinch it out, I take this, I'm, I'll turn this into a ball, and I'll pick this up. So I'm just taking my little quarter inch dowel and I'm cleaning up that edge, okay? That is all I'm doing. I'm just kind of cleaning up that edge. And if you see a spot that you didn't push enough glazing in, just use the edge of your of your dowel or your or your skewer that you're using. Oops. So this seems to work out okay doing it this way. Now remember, I started up here because I started glazing up here. I started up here for one reason, and that's because the glazing compound, the lacquer thinner in it, has already started to evaporate, and it makes it much easier for me to clean. This dowel actually just kind of cuts the glass, I mean cuts the, the putty right off the edge. Now when you get into your obscure glasses and your textured glasses, mainly your textured glasses, make sure that you get down in there and you get it cleaned up. And that is going to come with the usage of your brush. So the glazing, the brush that we use to polish these up, and we use two of them. The first one is what's called an acid brush, okay? This is an acid brush, see it's got a hole in it. Basically, you know, people buy it to clean their tires with on their car. And if you buy two of those, you can see this one has been really well used and it, pol it polishes the lead up like nobody's business. So before we can use that brush, we don't want a lot of excess glazing on the window because it's going to pick it up, okay? What we want to do with that brush is actually polish the lead and clean clean all the glazing that is left on the top surface of the lead, on the round part at the top. Get that off of there, okay? And you can see, see how the, the glazing is dry? Just, I mean, it's, it's still a little bit pliable, but it's got a nice texture to it. And it's coming off really good. And you, again, you don't need all that excess stuff. You just need to get rid of it. And you can put all of this right back in the bucket. Because in a couple of days, you're going to need to break the glazing down again which in a couple days we'll have another window to finish. So we're bringing you this oak tree project in hopes that it will inspire you to maybe even, you know, take on something a little bit bigger project than you thought you were capable of because, you know, and prove to yourself that you can do that. And it doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be the oak tree project. We're going to start up here again and we're going to use our acid brush in a circular motion, okay? So the acid brush in a circular motion is gonna polish up the lead and because of the tinning that's in the glazing compound itself that we put in there with a, a little bit of black oil-based paint because the glazing is oil-based, we're gonna polish this up. And the other thing is that we're getting any, any glazing that's left on the glass itself off of it, okay? So, yes, the answer to your question is you can push too hard and break your glass. But you need to find a happy medium because this is the difference between a really nice looking window and a window that's got a bunch of shadows in it because it's not cleaned correctly. And you put it, you need to put as 
as much effort into cleaning the window as you do putting it together. So these textures, these textured glasses, man, they just polish up so pretty. And remember we talked about when in the oak tree project that some of the textures are up, some of the textures are down. And the, some of the glasses that aren't textured are even upside down because they look, they look so much different during the day or at night when you don't have any light behind the window. And when you polish these windows out by hand, there's a lot of love that goes in them and your customers appreciate it. And the one thing you have to do is make sure that you clean your textured glasses with your acid brush because if you don't, you'll never get the, after two days, you'll never get the, you won't get the glazing out of those cracks right there, that texture. Now there's even a little bit more glazing coming on. And that's fine. So um, a lot of you, when you're glazing, you may use a plaster of Paris on your windows or whiting. And you know, that's the traditional way. All those things produce a whole lot of dust. And uh, with the, the way that we do it, we don't, we don't use the whiting anymore, the, the glazing compound broken down. Once it evaporates, hardens up, and it's just like cement within about a week to 10 days. So, because we do everything in the glass studio, in our beautiful private studio, we don't use glazing, it produces way too much dust for us. So, I mean, we don't use the whiting or the plaster of Paris. However, I will tell you something that is good for polishing, and um, you know, when we're building frames, but we have, we're not building a lot of frames these days because these are all in their own frame anyway, so. But um, sawdust works really well to polish the lead. And you can go down to, to a sawmill and get some sawdust or you can, you can make some in your garage if you have a table saw and then put a, just a little bit of sawdust on it. Put that on there and then just do the same thing. So we're gonna let this sit for the morning and let that glazing just dry out a little bit more. You know, the worst thing that you can do is get to the job and have to clean the windows. You should, you should be able to get to the job, put the saw on the lift to cut the stops that are gonna be holding in the glass in the window, and up we go. Keep these bad boys down. The only thing we'll have to clean when we get there is the glass that they're going behind. But then once it's clean, that's it. You won't have access to it anymore. So yeah, we'll have to clean. So these are just beautiful. I guess, Barb, you can see how shiny the lead is, right? And uh, so we didn't use any any type of polishing agent, just good old, good old fashioned backbone. Good old fashioned backbone. And then we'll just take that little bit of, that's the little bit of dust that it produces right there, y'all. Look at that, nothing. So it's really pretty. So then remember, you're doing this twice and then you're gonna let it set up, and then you really should come back to it. Now the glazing recipe is on our website. You go to our website, you can download it, it's all, it's all yours. When you go to our website at conwayglass.com, there's a whole list at the header, okay? Click on the RDRV page. When you click on the RDRV page, a lot of things are gonna happen. Well, you're just gonna get the RDRV page, but a lot of good things can happen because there's a lot of very informative videos there for you to learn from. And so, but click on that and then scroll down and get the recipe. You can download it. It's, a, it's an old recipe and we think that it'll help you. And if this does help you, we'd like you to subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Also, there's a little bell over there in the corner. Click on that bell so that you are forewarned about our brand new video coming out every Monday night at 7 p.m. So thanks again for everybody tuning in. I'm Ed. Hi, Barb. Hi. Thanks for tuning in. And don't forget to subscribe. And remember, the glazing recipe is on the RDRV page on our website at conwayglass.com. Click on the RDRV page. And you, my friend, are glazing.